your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Well, welcome home, family. It's your mom, mom and, and dad. dad. Yes. And we are back for part two of yeah. my most favorite thing ever. Evan, honestly, <sighs> if we could do cast bios yes, all, all every year. single week, I would. I'm I like, just we'll, bring in the photos and I just want to talk about people. Can just we, make wild guesses. Can we convert this podcast to just looking at every single TV show online? Okay. And just doing cast bios of ever. So like, even yes. if it's like a new show coming out with, uh, you know, some what about uh, news anchors. That's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> we're, we get so deep that it's like, oh, a new movie coming out. That's just like a blockbuster. We're just going to go through the cast. We're going to go through the, the, the assistants. I like the I, costume I designers. Say, so long as we can go through everyone. Does Every that person. feel a little judgmental? No. Yeah, but I think, it, you know <laughs> what I mean? I think it's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? It's just cast bios for everything under the sun. I have to tell you, though. So if you haven't listened to our part one episode that came out a couple days ago, listen to that. Um, so far, Joan, Joan's got a, a no, sexy, sexy cast. It's not bad at all. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. It's and and what makes me feel pretty excited about it is I remember when we did the cast bios for uh, Gary season, yeah. with Jerry Gary Turner. Uh, I remember looking at these women and being like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And I was nervous about the men. Now, not sure what they're actually going to personally. Of course. Be like of course. No clue what their personality. What we're going to find out about them through the internet. But from the photos themselves, I was like, damn. Yeah. Okay, No, everyone's Joan. hot. Everyone is Everyone's so hot. hot. So far, so hot. You know what I mean? So far, so hot. Also, like we noticed, so many people in finance and kind of giving the energy of like wealth. Like a lot of everyone rich has rich smiles. Wealth. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> everyone has rich smiles. The veneers rich are popping. Jobs. Yeah. I'm not seeing anyone with normal lives. Everyone looks kind of rich. So maybe, you know, maybe Joan put in there, like, make sure. He's Joan's rich. like, make sure he's an absolute <laughs> daddy with yeah. cash coming out of his ears. Okay? Exactly. Cash he's gonna daddy. be hot stuff, cash daddy. Exactly. And, you know, be willing to move in. If I have to move, he's going to have to move my entire family with right. me, set us up in a manch, you know, compound, a big energy. old manch, mansion yeah. compound uh -huh. situation. That's what it feels like a little bit. Exactly. To me. I agree. I mean, they're nailing it. And I say, get it, Joan. Yeah, absolutely. Get absolutely it. Absolutely. Get it. I wonder if he had to like put in your like, you know, tax return in order to be uh, submitted to this thing. I don't know. It seems like it so far. It feels that way. But today we have part two, the remainder of the men. I think mm -hmm. we have like maybe 11 yeah. men left. Um, so I say we just... I don't think we waste any time. I, I, I say we waste no time because you know why, fam? We've got the premiere episode of Jones season. It's uh, airing Wednesday yes. and our recap will be dropping on Friday. Right. So we're getting into it now exactly okay but just as a heads up in case it's your first time with us i like to do my little spiel mm -hmm. we have never seen any of these men before it's our first time we're going to pull up a photo of them from the abc cast list just their photo and their name at first we're going to look at their photo make wild guesses and assumptions about what they might be like and what they may do after we make our guesses we pull up their actual abc cast bio information yeah and kind of try to get a gist, but we're still going to make assumptions. So, gentlemen, if we come for you, it is not the case. Sorry about it. Or if we say you're splendid and you're the worst, Doesn't well, mean... sucks for us. <laughs> we'll figure it out soon. Yeah. And, you know, like, the, don't take the compliments or the yeah. judgment too hard. Yeah. Because who knows who you just really are. Just be like water and flow, my guys. Yes. You know what I mean? This, this is, is just, all fun This and is games. the beginning of the reality TV journey. Just and if you're like in your water. 60s and you take yourself too seriously, maybe that's also something else we should talk about. So, well, you know, I may be like, we're that rolling with the I'm punches. A, you know, I'm a sensitive lady. Maybe yeah, do you some get more sensitive are... as you get older or do you get more relaxed? It's kind of a different thing. I feel like it's a combo. I've lost some sensitivity and then also gotten like more sensitive. Yeah. So it's anyway, hard to know. No need to get into my psychology. Let's talk about these men. Yay! <laughs> okay. Should we pull up? Our first for our part the two. Last, the last guy we did was Guy. So Guy was the last gentleman we did in part one. So mm. next we have 
Jack. Jack. Okay, by the way, family, this is a good episode to tune into if you're watching. You should watch on the YouTube because we have yeah. the photos up with us as we're looking. Jack, okay, this man. Real quick, before you continue, <laughs> Jack. big boomer names. You know what I mean? Just like Jack. Oh, God. Guy, Gil, Gil Gary. Gary. I mean, these David. David I mean, these Dan. names are come right out of just like basicnames.com. <laughs> I you know do what I mean? love the name Jack. It is a great name. I'm not saying your name's bad. If it is now, a boomer, but this, these are boomer names. This man looks like his name and this man has jack has so many calluses on his hands like these these hands have seen yeah. wood that sounds so wrong these hands have seen which they probably have a lot over the years <laughs> old wood hands jack stop <laughs> I mean, like oh, Jack, God. his wood. I mean, I'm just saying, it's oh, built God, in. It's built no, in. I'm no, sorry. Stop it. Stop it. I meant like carpentry. Okay, like yes. Jesus Christ, Allah, oh, Jesus okay. Christ, yeah, Allah. Um, Jack is a hundred percent. This man, we're gonna get a lot of just <sighs> from him. He's yeah, gonna he, come out of the limo, and and Joan's gonna be like, um, he's not gonna introduce himself, and she's gonna be like, oh, oh, hi, what's your name? Just gonna kind of walk up. He's like, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of son of a. You know what I mean? I, I, damn it. It's oh, a lot see, of I'm that. I'm not getting that. I'm, I'm getting, getting like stub the toe. Like, gosh, shit. I'm getting like, doesn't say anything. Just kind of, oh. it's Jack. Grunts. And he kind of just in the mansion is going to not be participating. And the producers are going to have to be like, Jack, you guys are all supposed to be in the room talking about how much you like Joe, Joan. And you're sitting in the corner just eating a stack of pancakes in silence. Mm. And then Joan's going to like give him the rose and he's yeah. just going to go, huh. And then walk back. Kind of he a just... beast. <laughs> a beast of a man. But he's not going to say much. <laughs> he's not going to say much. Mm. But then we're going to get one one-on-one -on -one with him. Almost dead silence. And then at one point, someone's going to bring up like his dog or a grandchild. <laughs> and we're going to get a single tear from him. Uh, yeah, but barely, a big emotional guy, but like the classic but heart on the outside. any words. No words, Jack. That's, what, that's, that's Jack, his nickname. Jack is giving me... Owns a plumbing business. Yeah, this is carpentry, plumbing. Yeah. Jack has like never that. in his life paid for an oil change. He changes that damn oil. Honestly, maybe if he does say one thing, he's going to ask Joan if she knows how to change her own tire. Exactly. And if she says no, he's just going <laughs> to and walk out. Useless. <laughs> All right, ready? Wait. So you think? Wait. You think, I think he's like a plumbing plumber? business? Like like some sort of blue collar, like classic tr uh, trade business owner. I'm going to go carpentry. Okay. Wait. No. I'm going to go I'm going to go for your oil change. I'm going to go mechanic. Okay. Jack's a mechanic. All right. Here we go. Jack. No words Jack is a mechanic. Jack Cater. is from Wait. <laughs> so he's the guy that's like tonight we have the scallops. I mean, what? <laughs> tonight we have the scallops. With the kale <laughs> vinaigrette Wait. dressing. <laughs> In my brain, it's just saying no words, Jack. And like as a caterer, you have to use so many words. So this guy's going to be so... He's I a mean, chef. Well, but, but, well, there's so many things though what caterer can mean, right? He's either... Um, you know, in like he's one of the servers, he's one of the chefs, or he runs a catering business. Like he is the caterer, which then requires like tons of people skills yeah. and needing to be like, oh, there's this big, huge event and I have to deal with sometimes really rough clients. Mm -hmm. And so I've got to be charming Jack. It's This is charming Jack. This isn't no, no talking Jack. I'm seeing one and from big... Chicago. So it probably pops right. off. Right. He lives a fast, fun life. The appetite, this uh, Jack, he's a retired restaurant owner. Oh, so he's a big chatter. Yeah. Retired restaurant owner and chef. I mean, those guys go table to table. I mean, the, solo trip to Italy last year. Oh, I couldn't be more wrong. Jack's a great time. Big Jack's softy who wants to tell his partner that he loves them every morning. <laughs> big, big lie, though. There's one big lie. Okay, go ahead. Here. It says fun facts. Jack's favorite treat is, is a cigar twice a month. No one would ever put in there exactly how many times <laughs> yeah. he smokes if it's not every day and he's trying to cut back. That's what he says to his doctor. He Exa goes, that's exactly he goes, what I was thinking. Twice a month, just like how they're like, well, how much do you, do you smoke? You, Never. Do you, how much do you drink? Occasionally. Beer a month, occasionally. maybe a beer a year. How, 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 how many you're beers like, a nine week? Beers. And you're I'm like, hungover right now. <laughs> yeah, always yeah so you definitely doctor. have a cigar every day. He's a father, a grandfather. He loves making people laugh. Jack's good time. He's good time Jack. Good time Jack. Racquetball champion. Went to Elvis concert last front row at Elvis's last concert. Whoa. So Jack's a good time. Okay. 
question. If he's front row at Elvis's concert, I wonder if like back in the day getting a front row seat was like crazy expensive or if all the tickets were the same price, but it's just who right. bought it Right, like first. in the 70s, there wasn't Ticketmaster. Right, so, so maybe they like, were all the same prices and he was just like a massive Elvis fan line. and he got in line first because like there wasn't anything online. You had to just stand in line. Yes. Wow, he's an adventurer. Mm-hmm. A proud racquetball champion, so he's going to be out there on the courts. I mean, he. I love that we have another grandfather. He wants to tell his partner he loves them every morning and every night before bed. Oh my god! He's a big softy. Wait, I love Jack. I thought Jack was just going to be. Love you. <laughs> Let's go to Jack. Italy. <laughs> I mean, I, I like Jack a well, you lot. Know the, the the words say a lot. I have to say, I think this is the person who I have gotten the most wrong from the photo. He's, he also looks, um, if I'm being honest, too, like like a normal guy, if that makes sense. Yeah. Everyone else so far, almost, not everyone, but uh, there's a glamour element to them. Yeah. Jack's a handsome man. But Jack looks just kind of like a like a normal guy, which I like. Jack looks like your handsome neighbor exactly. versus some of these guys are very like headshot exactly. energy. Exactly. Everyone yeah. like he doesn't know how to look into a camera. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he's just it's bright out. Yeah, I was gonna say Jack's looking right into the sun. Yeah, he's just like <laughs> Jack. They're like no, no, a little more natural, Jack. You know what I mean? Like that's what I like about Jack is Jack doesn't know this whole this whole process is is like a little Jack bit too with much. The, who's staring into the eclipse yeah. on this one? And they're like Jack, stop Jack's looking like into the sun. Bright as shit out here. <laughs> like, Jack, stop looking. Everyone into else the is sun. like leaning and you know doing a pose and a big smile. He's just, he's just, I'm kind of like Jack, to be honest with you. You go to Jack energy. He's giving me, you know what I mean? You go to Jack energy. Well, Jack, we read you wrong. Uh, Best of luck. Best of luck. I feel, I feel feel like you're going to be a good time. I don't know if it's going to be, I say halfway through. I say halfway through. Yeah, I agree. Um, All right. Before we move on to the next guy, we got to take a quick pause. Quick pause. So family, if I was one of the men on this season, I would want to impress Joan with my extensive knowledge of wine. Okay, I want to be the most interesting person in my wine knowledge at the mansion. Well, with our next partner, you can bring the best, most interesting wine from an independent winemaker with a truly unique story to that party. Okay, you'd be the most popular person in the mansion. I'm talking about Naked Wines. This podcast is sponsored by Naked Wines. Naked Wines is a subscription service that directly connects you to the world's finest independent winemakers so you can get award-winning wine delivered straight to your door. I just recently got a shipment from Naked Wines, and I have to tell you, every time I am absolutely wowed by the incredible wines that they send us, but this shipment included a bottle of Matt Parrish's Rosé of Pinot Noir, And fam, I brought this bottle to a party and I was a hit. The wine was a hit, but I'll just say I was it. I was a hit because of the wine. It was incredible. (laughs) Yeah, Naked Wines has been around for over 15 years and funds over 90 independent winemakers around the world. I love their quiz. We took their quiz together because we like the same wine and their quiz matches you with bottles that you love. And each shipment includes wines that recommend based on your previous ratings. Uh, And we've been rating the wine after we get it. And each shipment to us gets better and better. Yeah. And don't forget, you can pause or cancel at any time. So just because let's just say you got a trip coming up doesn't mean you can't enjoy Naked Wines before or after that much needed vacation. The wine, like I said, it's so good. And I also love supporting independent winemakers. Every single bottle has a great story behind it. And it's really special to sharing those stories when I bring a bottle to a friend's house. It's just incredible. Naked Wines believes that great wine is an experience and they're all about helping you connect with your friends, family, and community over a shared bottle of wine. Turn off the noise of the outside world and uncork a bottle to celebrate the little joys in life. Join the Naked Wines community and head to nakedwines.com slash mom dad for six bottles of wine for just $39.99 with shipping included. That's nakedwines.com slash mom dad for six bottles of wine for $39.99. Such an amazing deal. Nakedwines.com slash mom dad. Um, and also, family, before we dive back into these cast bios, I just wanted to say we recorded the cast bios episode a few days previous, and now we're coming from the future. 
A huge congratulations. Speaking of popping bottles, let us pop a bottle, pour a glass of wine out to our friends, Katie Thurston and Jeff, yes. our Carrie, for their engagement. I wow. <laughs> just had to take a moment wow. to say it's congratulations. They are just so incredible. Oh, I love them both so much and I'm so happy for them. So send congratulations to them, family. We love them. And I just had to, in the spirit of wine, mm -hmm. had to mention that before we uh, dive back into these cast bios. We love you, Katie and Jeff. Love Blah. you guys. Okay, next we have Jonathan. Jonathan. And we're back. And we're back to the Glamour Gorge. Yeah, yeah we're back to the, you know. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Jonathan. This is a real deal smile. Like, mm -hmm. look, at, look at his eyes. Look at the smile. This man could not be smiling any harder than he possibly is. Jonathan is the guy. He's going to have a really, like, basic normal job right a job yeah. where it's kind of like it's a it's an office job it's he's the most charming guy at the very well, normie job what i'm feeling is he has a job where everyone in his office doesn't really like what they do and they're miserable jonathan loves his job more than anyone's ever loved anyone ever oh, like jonathan right. comes in every day and he's just like God, it's gorgeous outside. Right. How is everybody? I'm so stoked that it's Monday right, and everyone's right. coming in pissed because it's a Monday. And Jonathan just like sets his alarm early. He's he's like setting his alarm and excitement Sunday night to go in to his like random sales job. You know, maybe he's working in, in, in the car biz or yeah, something. Yeah, I say he's a medical recruiter. You know what I mean? It's I, I'm, I'm saying I'll say maybe like, you know, parts for tech stuff. And Jonathan's great, but I will say... About fifteen percent of the time, you're, his his positivity is annoying. It's a little you know bit. What it's I mean? a like, I'm much. tired. I'm hungover from Sunday. It's Monday, and you're telling me how awesome it is is because you saw like a flower bloom on the way to work, and you're just like, Jonathan, <laughs> shut up, dude. Like, Jonathan, life's not that great. Jonathan's just, <laughs> Jonathan's just like, you know, he's like, yeah, you know what? I choose to walk to work. Yeah. Even though it takes me three and a half hours to walk, I set my alarm for four thirty because I really want to soak in the world around the me city. because life is a gift, mm -hmm. and I really want to. I want to soak in every flower hour every every blade of grass and so i set my alarm so early to get here he all on top of it gets there 30 minutes still before everybody else does like people try to sabotage his day to see if he could get negative and he can't you know what i mean like someone will like steal his food from the fridge yeah. someone will you know drop something on his seat to make it all like gross and then he they're just gonna be like is jonathan gonna crack today it's today the day he's, he jo cracks. he's jolly jonathan he's jolly joy jonathan. he's joyful jonathan I like that. joyful jolly jonathan and you can't crack JJJ. him because he will he will always be positive yes agreed and no matter how hard his day is he is just he's beaming because he that's the difference i feel there are some people who try to put on positivity mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but when they're alone Mm -hmm. in the darkness of their home in the darkness of their soul the darkness of their soul comes what, out what's really going and on? it's like and it's like and then there's where there's like secret rage yeah. but they act super positive right no not jonathan joyful jonathan he's just it's born like with the endorphins he, he gets home he's like our daughter you're like where like, yes. you, how are you always this you know what ember energy ember energy John, jo jolly joyful jonathan has ember energy and it's where like you get home and you're you're still smiling yeah. like sometimes ember will just be sitting at the table yeah. Just smiling, and just I'm like, smiling. "What are you? What, what's going what on? Are what are you doing? thinking about?" And yeah. She's just like, oh, "I was just thinking about something." Just thinking about just something. Big old smile. Yeah. All right. There's some people. Hold on a second, though. That was my take. <laughs> Do you just agree with me? <laughs> well, I mean, you kind of went for it, and I was just, you know, it was like a whole thing. So I just had a great time with you in it, but I just didn't feel like there was enough you, room for me yeah. there. You know what I mean? If I'm being honest with you, so I think that. <laughs> I agree. I remember I said, I said like, you know, the sabotage, try to sabotage him. Like he's the guy that, you know, I, so I'm with you on this hundred percent. I mean, you, what can I say? This guy's like a bat mean guy. I mean, look <laughs> at his face. This guy's like pissed at everyone. I do say, I uh, have to say, I like his sweater choice. It's a cream. It's a you, cream knit sweater. You Very know nice. me in a sweater. Yep. I'm like, sorry, Jonathan, but you want to get me Randy. Right. Evan wants to get me Randy. He throws on a sweater. Yeah. You know, I feel like there's a whole big thing about like, oh my God, my Cozy guy, time. my guy in gray sweatpants. Right. That's the thing which I love. But isn't that a dick thing? But isn't that what that is? Gray sweatpants aren't like, oh, they're just cozy. It's like the idea is that you can see stuff. Is it not? You are such a man. It makes me Ill. <laughs> but isn't it? I mean, it's like that—that's the thing about. No, it's like I don't think so. I Maybe. I think it is, babe. No, gray I is very specific. 
But there's something about a gray sweatpant. Like a guy just looks like it's just like a hot, like sexy, cozy okay. thing. Comment down below. If, oh my god! If, all of our comments are going to just be like, "Yeah, dick print galore," <laughs> and I'm like, "That's comment not." Comment down below if the gray sweatpant is because guys are cozy, or because you can see unit. You know what I mean? So just unit. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> if <laughs> I'm just saying, I think I'm right here, and I'm not being guy here. I think you're being oblivious to the realities. Oh my! I think that it's just because it's like. I don't know. There's just something about or else, they would just say, or else people would just say sweatpants. Okay. Anyway, what my point was is that there's something about for me a sweater. Yes. When you're in a sweater, like a cozy sweater. Yeah. Oh man. You know. Yes. So I like I I enjoy a man in a sweater, like the type that Jonathan has yes. on. Um, okay. I'm gonna say that Jonathan is. Um, it's gonna say sales. Okay. He's in sales. Are you kidding me? Who doesn't want to talk to yeah, Jonathan on the phone or meet in person and have a nice lunch? Jonathan's gonna take you to his favorite restaurant every time and it's gonna be the best experience of your life because he's gonna amp up yeah. the menu and he's best friends with the chef yeah. and all, all the servers in there yeah, and, yeah. and I'll order he's, for because, you. He's, because yeah. he's best friends with everybody. Right, right. I'm gonna say like medical recruit or something like that. Okay, Here okay. Go. Here we go. Shipping consultant. Iowa shipping consultant. Wow. Okay, listen. That's not too crazy far off, right? A shipping consultant? I don't think so. I think it's someone that like helps figuring out like how to ship, like the logistics of shipping. Yeah, things. which is like a which is which is like I an guess you office interact with humans. job, and you're working with people. Right? Yeah, that's true. Right? You're not like he's not like a he's not like an architect. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's. I feel like it's in the same vein. Also, for some reason, shipping consultant makes me think of the office, even though that's not what they do. That's and paper so it's like sales. I'm just yeah. I'm picturing like you know a guy like Jonathan is every woman's dream. The material specialist is full of life, love, and positivity. He's easy on the eyes. As Theater well. guy, attending what? live theater. Loves to go to museums, attending live theater, and spends time with his three pets, a dog, a cat, and a floppy-eared rabbit. Okay, hold on a second here. <laughs> wow. Okay, you guys, can, can we not say that the energy is similar? This man owns a dog, a cat, and a floppy-eared rabbit, okay? And he loves to go to the theater... Too Live theater. Right, right. This man knows every word for every musical well, so ever. A guy like Jonathan is every woman's dream. And he sings it. Okay. It's full enchanted. This guy is like a prince from Enchanted. He's singing the musical theater song like Snow White. Yeah. And he's got like his floppy eared rabbit and his dog. Everything's like interact. His animals like interact with him and sing. It's full Snow White, full Cinderella energy. So okay? he toyed with the idea of being a bodybuilder. Okay, so he's jacked. So he's ripped. Now this is interesting. Jonathan starts every day with two cups of coffee in bed. That's a long in time. Bed? That's a long time in bed. Okay, so he loves to unless you're doing iced coffee and you're chugging. <laughs> you're in bed for like an hour. Yeah. To drink two coffees. Okay, back so to he's back. he's not getting up and he's walking a lounger. to the he likes to he's lounge. He's an early morning lounger. He likes to lounge. With or all you're just getting up at four and journaling for two hours. Do you think his dog, his cat, and his floppy eared rabbit are sleeping in bed with him? hundred percent. You know that that little floppy eared rabbit sleeps on yeah. that pillow next yeah. to him. Oh gosh. Love Joan, that. I hope you're down with a floppy eared rabbit. Can we at least get a hometown you? just to see the, the trio? I need to see the, that trio. <laughs> That's all I really care about now is seeing the trio. His two kids are his number one priority. But he's ready to make time for himself and his dating life. Um... I mean, after re-entering the dating pool in his golden era, Jonathan is ready to find that spark. Here's hoping. I mean, I feel like Jonathan probably doesn't have any problems getting dates. Yeah, I think he's going to be really laid back sure. about this whole thing. Yeah. And I think it's not like a big priority to him. And like whether he stays or goes doesn't really matter. And I think that he has many dates and he has the trio and he has his kids. Something about his energy to me just says like he's going to be very not anxious about this whole thing. And you he's going to be just kind of like whatever works. You no know worries. what else? You know what else gives that? It says that he loves an amusement park funnel cake, but right. he also was toying with the idea of being a bodybuilder. It means that he's down with balance. balance. He's not the boiled chicken guy. He's not boiled chicken no. guy. No, he wants to lay in bed with you for two hours and have coffee and talk in the right. morning with your the pets, maybe sing a musical theater song or two. He's like, maybe I'll be a bodybuilder. Maybe. But he's like, I don't want to live but the he's, life But of he's a also like, he's like, then let's have pancakes in the morning together, That's baby girl. That's what like, I'm saying, we don't girl. have to just do, you know, egg whites exactly. only. Exactly. Or just exactly. protein shakes. Right. Which I like the balance. Yeah, you are a balance queen that way. Yeah. I like him. I, I for some reason, Yeah. it's just not going to go far. 
Mm. I think that he's not going to be fighting for her. Yeah. I don't know why. I just feel like he's kind of just like chilling and he's not, he's not going to be like, I need this. Yeah. The only thing that, you know, he has gives, very non anxious eyes. He does. Well, he just has, he's got joyful Jonathan eyes. The only thing about him that makes me wonder is the fact that he loves live theater. Is I'm like, is that live musical theater or live like theater, like straight plays, right? Sure, so, my, mix. so my question is, is he going to have musical theater kid energy? Because if uh, he has musical theater kid energy, then he's not going to be laid back. No, and I say that like, in the best Joan. way possible because you know we're a musical theater family. Yeah. Is he going to give us the drama? Is he going to give us the one, two box step? You know, is he going to give a five, six, seven, eight? Is he going to do a little spin with Joan Ripper in and be like, excuse me, sorry, gentlemen. And like, you know, right. That's the only, that's Acting. the only thing in this bio that makes me d like go is, will he be like the guy who's mm. not, you know, we'll see. Anyway, we'll see. Love you, Jonathan. Love you, Jonathan. Um, okay. Next, Next we have Jordan. Oh, Jordan. Okay. Jordan. Jordan is giving me kind of the opposite of Jonathan energy, but not completely in the way that like in his places of work, he's always kind of like, yeah, fuck cracking a joke. Ah. You know, it's not just pure joy. Jordan is a lawyer. Definitely has potential lawyer vibes. Cause for like sure. lawyers, lawyers always have this, at least every experience in my life with a lawyer, they're very like unrattled. No matter yeah. what you're talking about, it's like, yeah, no, yeah, uh huh, yeah, we'll look at that, uh huh, yeah, we'll check that out, mm hmm. They're very like low stress energy. Yeah. Cause I think their life isn't dealing with nothing but catastrophes all day. So there's something about just like the, yeah, man, yeah, sounds good. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. It's I all feel like very, I always like, have gotten uh -huh. like a really high strung energy from I don't lawyers. know, at least my experience. I mean, I'm how many get, lawyers are you friends with? I I'm don't know. 20 to 30 <laughs> were daily, I talk to lawyers. No, I would say, I would say he, he owns a law firm. Something Owns. about him. Mm, yeah. No. I I don't know about that. I when I look at Jordan, he's not greasy lawyer energy. He's just like I don't know what it is. When I look at Jordan, I think he's always kind of a little, you know, it's that smirk. It's not like a full. It's a smirk. You know what? Honestly, Jordan is giving me you. Jordan is giving me you. In like your energy, well, he's, yeah. where you guys kind of have a similar eyes when you smile, you kind of True. got that smirk, and you are the king of the little kind of sarcastic yeah. side side comments. No, the digs. I'm just nice. I'm joyful. You're Evan. You're, you're, <laughs> you're you know you're you're the nicest guy, but you're gonna always have a little a little something. Like you said, that's how you've dealt with your trauma. Is you got to do Listen. you know you got to roast. And I Jordan, think, me and you have similar trauma. Let's work through it. Which makes me feel like I would like Jordan yeah. because I like those the un, like the kind of side comments. But yeah. I think Jordan, this is my guess. I think Jordan was a thousand percent a playboy when he was younger. Ah. He gives me big playboy energy. Like he was out there hooking up with everybody. And he, when I say everybody, I mean big city because that man is not from a small New, town. New York. This is New York. This is not LA. This is New York. This is Boston. This is Chicago. This is something. It's he's 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 a big city guy. Got it. Okay. Um, big playboy when he was younger wow, okay. in the city. Okay. okay. And I think he's one of our guys who's never been married. I think this is his first his first uh, round of being like, maybe wow. I'll get engaged for the first time. And I think he gives me like creative director of an ad agency. Wow. Okay. He's like, you know, he he's he's there's a sexiness to the job. Yeah. And then also he's worked his way up to get to become like the director and run it. And he's not around often, but when they're having that meeting, a creative meeting, he pops in, throws in some like side comment and it's gold. It's and they're gold. like, use what, whatever okay. the boss says, so whatever the boss a, uh, says. John Hamm. Yeah. I've okay. been wanting one, you know, so maybe that Jordan's that for me. Boston lawyer. You a Boston lawyer. I'm going to go New York creative director. All right, let's see. Jordan, what are you? Senior Chicago. sales executive Senior in Chicago. Okay. <laughs> okay. Got Chicago. Got Chicago. Well, I, didn't got, I said New York, but big city. You said every major city, yeah, <laughs> um, which is where most of these people are from. Um, okay. No, but I, I do agree. I do agree. Senior sales executive does mean knows how to talk to people, which means... But first thing it says is this dad is extremely family oriented. Oh, yeah. Very wrong. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Very close to this three daughters and three brothers. Um... 
with his three daughters and his three brothers. Interesting. Deep okay. Dish, deep dish pizza from Lou Malnati's. When he's playing working, ping pong. He loves walking his dog, Mickey. Wow, you would hate this. Jordan misses the days when visitors would stop by unannounced. You and Jordan would not get along. <laughs> Listen, family. I don't know what he's talking about, but here's the bottom line. Yes, I like a text in advance. I like a plan, okay? Yeah. You know why? Because typically I'm a goddamn... I'm not saying I like you know it. What? I'm because just saying. Because I'm a goddamn disaster, okay? So most of the time my house is absolutely disastrous. I'm a disaster. I'm in the middle of having a spiral panic attack. And so when someone just like knocks on sure. my door and is like, hey, I thought I'd stop by, I'm like... Yeah, no, I'm like, I totally I'm understand. I'm barely functioning as it is. I was having an identity crisis right. five moments ago. You no, know what I, I mean? mean? And listen, when someone stops by unannounced and I think you, it's and, a wild and you like them and it's like really awesome, it's not a problem. But like generally, and I hate to say this to anybody out there. Even my most favorite people in the world, I, I'd like a text and be like, are you home? Right, of course. Can I come in 30 minutes? Sure. Like give me a give couple me a second, minutes. Give me a beat. But here's the thing. It's always the people that you don't really want to come by your house are the ones that drop by unannounced. Unannounced. Just it's it's kind of like, it's almost it's like, it's the people that don't have awareness do that. And those are the people that you generally don't want dropping by. The people that you do want dropping by would never. It can shock me sometimes. Jordan won a on. Mr. Legs contest in college. I love a leg. You love a leg. You know what? Another fun fact. Don't like when people drop by unannounced. And I love and a I, leg. You love a leg. I'm a big leg g girl. So Thanksgiving food, but, but, family but, but football. But winning a Mr. Legs contest means that he what does that mean? applied and who, how many people were in this? Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, how many guys I, like I signed up for a, a bunch Mr. of guys Legs and then legs competition in college? And by the way, is this like a bodybuilder leg? Is that like you're fat? You're fast? Or yeah, is that mean you're fast? Or is this like you know it's college and like a bunch of guys are like let's see if we can like walk the runway, maybe throw on a heel? You know I live for that. I yeah, don't know what don't what, know. what does this mean. What does this mean? I, oh. he hopes he's a bad. Find... He's a bad. Basic ass he's dude. He's a basic ass dude. You know, pizza, ping pong, family football, food. He's a Midwest yeah. bad. He hopes to find someone who loves being outside and trying new restaurants. Yeah. And let take life too seriously. It's all very right. basic giving... ass dude energy. Life is never Nothing boring unique, when he's around. Really, not in a mean way. Just... He l jo Jordan loves Thanksgiving for the food, family, and football. Yeah, I mean, you know what that's I mean? <laughs> this is like just generic Midwest guy bio. Like you apply it to anyone. Yeah, I also though I will say I, love all these I can imagine Joan liking someone stopping by unannounced. She wow. seems very much like you know on her TikTok she's always cooking for so many people. Really. Yeah. And you know, the school admin thing. I don't know. She just seems very like. That's true. School. If you work in school, yeah. you're generally, I she feel like seems, a very open She seems person. very nurturing of all people. And so it's very much like open door policy energy. So maybe they'll connect in that Shout way. Shout out to anyone who works in a school because I could not think of anything less my personality. The, I, Evan, you would, when I say you'd be the worst teacher of all time with <laughs> people coming up to you and being like complaining about all the work all you're the doing with their kids, then you're like, oh no, I mean, shout out to the teachers. You would, you would, would be the worst teacher it. on planet Earth. Day one complaint, I'd be like, I quit. I quit. Yeah, you would. You don't, you don't have the stamina. No. You don't have the emotional stamina. Yeah, it wouldn't be the kids. The it would be the parents that of drive course, me crazy. Of course. Um, well, Jordan, you know, again, you know, no, no shade, but basic ass dude vibes. Basic and ass dude so vibes. I think. I'm not seeing anything I'm not special seeing, here. I'm not, I'm not seeing we go far. In and out. Yeah. All right. Well, before we move on to the next guy, let's take a, another quick pause. So fam, I mean, I'll be real. I saw some gorgeous locks amongst these men. The hair is popping this season, okay? And I want my hair to be popping too, which is why I started using Nutrafol about 10-ish months ago. I have had friends and family use Nutrafol over these years and rave about it, but I had to try it myself. And I will tell you what, about three months after starting Nutrafol, I started noticing the improvement in my hair, like the growth, 
less shedding. It's glossy. It's thickened up. And it's just gotten better since. I am so happy. I can now tell you firsthand how amazing Nutrafol has been for me. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand trusted by over 1 million people. See thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding in just three to six months with Nutrafol. Nutrafol is physician formulated with 100% drug-free ingredients. It supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting key root causes of thinning, like stress, hormones, aging, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism through whole body health. And listen, thinning hair is different for everyone, so a one-size-fits-all approach to hair growth doesn't really cut it. Nutrafol has multiple formulas for men and women that are tailored to different life stages and lifestyle factors so you can get what you need. And Nutrafol clinically tests final formulations to ensure their efficacy. They're incredible, and the results show that, fam. With a Nutrafol subscription, building a hair growth routine is simple. Purchase online, no prescription required. Automated deliveries and free shipping keep you on track. Plus, you can save up to 20%. You'll have access to free naturopathic doctor consults and a Headspace membership is included. How amazing is that? Get results you can run your fingers through. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code MOMDAD. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and stylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N U T. R-A-F-O-L dot com, promo code mom dad. That's neutral dot com, promo code mom dad. Okay, on to the next one. On to Keith. And the boomer Keith. name. Yeah, Keith. Keith. <laughs> Keith is. Keith now, is, Keith, is, looks, Keith, Keith looks like every dad from a movie in 2005. I was about to say, do you know who Keith is? Okay, so this is going to be a problem. I'm going to be stuck on this, and this is the only thing I'm going to see for my predictions about Keith. What's this guy's name? He's in so many movies and, like, TV shows, and he's always plays... He's got dark hair and a dark beard, and he always plays the boss, and he talks like this. Oh. He's always like... Hold on a second. He was in, he was in up, 30 Rock. Hold while on. While you look this up, Keith 100% does not have a son. He has three daughters, right? Because it's always there's something that goes on. Like the harder the man, the rip, more daughters. Rip torn, rip torn. Oh, interesting. Everybody, okay, I'm like yeah, yeah, this, yeah, rip torn. This guy, yeah, rip torn. He was in Men in Black, Thirty Rock, and he's always playing the guy that yeah. talks like this. Right, right, That's right. That's not all I'm gonna say with Keith. But so so Keith, go ahead. Keith, all Keith does is go to like cheerleading meets, soccer meets. You know what I mean? Like Keith, he's always, he's, he's, he's got the family. Keith, bus. Keith is always repairing his vintage car, you know, building stuff, DIY King. He loves investing in other people's sons. You know what I mean? The guy with like three daughters is always like, Oh, you're saying like he wish he had like, sons? Not, even, not even so much wish, but it's like his brother has a son and he's like, so he's going to his football games too. He's not you know what I'm saying? His daughter's he's lives? absolutely investing in his daughters. I'm just saying he's investing there's in There's something lives. about the fact that he like, he definitely has only daughters. Yeah. I don't know why I'm seeing that. I'm just seeing. Do you that. think? See, okay, Keith. Now I'm stuck on Rip Torn. Okay, with this with this expression, yeah. with this face. So I'm gonna say that Keith, this man is gonna say, "God damn it," a lot, and he's ugh, just kind of huffing and puffing, and he's always gonna be yelling, yelling nonstop. But but he's not mad. Yeah, that's just how he is. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's always he's the guy who's on the phone. He's gonna have some sort of like. CEO position. Yeah. A CEO in like more of a small town position. Got it. But he's got like he owns a bunch but of he's tractors. Got big, yes. Yes. Like he rents tractors out. Yes. So he's like Midwest CEO, but has like big city boss energy yeah. where he he's always yelling and freaking out. He you know he's on the phone and he's like, God damn it, Paul. It got stuck in another Trucking. dot 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 dot. Yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah, yeah. he's not mad. Yeah. That's just how he talks. You know what's funny? I feel the opposite. Okay. He looks like that on first look, but I think he's actually happy guy. Happy guy. He's but he but he's got like he's kind of got curmudgeon eyes, you know, because he's kind of squinting and he's kind of got he's mid talk almost like he's mid yell. But I'm getting softy. The daughter like softened him up. He's a softy. He is. 
a he he's in the same he, he's in trucking like he, he owns a bunch of trucks but he's like soft and fun his think, partner in the business is the curmudgeon. He's the nice guy. I think he still uses a pager as well as a cell phone. He's always on his cell phone. Well, he definitely has one of those calculators. But still uses a you pager. Hear it. By the way, I was on the phone with someone this morning. And you could hear like, the And calculator. I heard the click, click, click. Zzz, 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 and I was like, cool. Okay, maybe this isn't a good partnership. But anyway. Um, <laughs> I love those calculators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my mom still uses them. Um, but... No, I also picture Keith enjoying a monster truck rally or two. Like that's how he cools mm. off. He's all to me, his adrenaline, his like pumping energy is always at a 10. And so to relax, he just continues the 10 energy by going to monster truck sure, rallies. And sure. he's screaming Replace and that's the... where he gets to have his like beer and you know, whatever. Yeah. But, but Keith's gonna enjoy a nice cigar as well with uh, with his buddy a, fr- a few slides. Only back. twice a month though. Yeah, you know, uh yeah. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, you know yeah, what? Yeah. Keith goes twice a month. Other guy every day. But okay. Keith, Keith enjoys every once in a while. He's, that jacket too is very just like dad jacket. Like some of the other guys had kind of cool, sexy ones and like an interesting vibe. That he packed up, picked off the rack because he was like, I can't go the risky. I'm gonna go right down the middle with the classic. I think he's gonna be really intense. Okay. But a kind soul deep down, mm. but just it's just gonna be a lot and it's gonna be big and booming. Generous but hard. And when she doesn't give him a rose when he gets uh when he exits at one point he's gonna have his cell phone in his pocket or pager ready to like hop on a call because you know someone busted a tractor and he's gonna deal with their he's not a modern man no the the goatee says a lot the goatee says born in the 60s maybe late 50s early 60s not a big I, he doesn't love change we also have a double collar situation going on that's what i'm saying he showed up in that original collar they gave him the they jacket they gave him the jacket you know they gave yeah, him the jacket this guy keith they is must be keith likes what he likes and has not changed keith wears the same clothes he eats the same food he loves the same See, this same, is why same. I'm, but this is why i'm sticking Cuts by, his own but grass. this is why i'm sticking by my point because i thought for when you were saying oh i think they are dressing them i'm like i disagree with you but now at this point with these amount of suede and leather leather jackets they have to be giving them these jackets um so when i'm visualizing keith keith is wearing a long sleeve pale blue button down yeah and when i picture him in that maybe it's not tractors maybe he's big city but he's still Uh, yelling he's still yelling boss but he's giving him track they give him a tractor jacket so now all of a sudden all right let's see let's do this keith what are you san jose california i nailed it again you guys, I you fucking guys. nailed it. I told you guys. You guys, it literally says girl dad. It doesn't even say what he does right His here. It just says girl dad. It says girl dad. I Evan, mean, that, you know what? You guys, if you were listening to the last one, I got rancher dead on. Evan, this, the only thing I said about this guy was he only has girls. And Evan, then they call him girl dad. That actually, That's actually I'm kind of wilding right now. That's actually kind of that's insane. That's crazy. 6'5". No, but whoa, that's wild. Aunt Katie would love. And um, a big personality to match. But listen, though. The fact that it says girl dad as a job yes. makes what you're saying even in, more insane. Yes. That, that that means that all he's going to talk about in his entrance and everything, or maybe he'll even bring his daughters with him. Mm-hmm. Like it's going to be all about his daughters. It says he single dad everyone. raising his daughters. Wow. I literally said, he, yeah. This Okay, well, well look though. The sales director... And okay. father of three. Okay, so sales director means that he's got a, a big job where he might be yelling in that, okay? But, but also, with his girlies. Sales guys, you know, generally like charming, nice, right? Maybe. Loving, smart, creative, San Jose. Um, it's not only six foot five. That's tall. Social butterfly. He's dedicated most of his adult life to being a single dad raising his daughter. Unconditionally. What? In the bottom it says he's ready to live, he's ready to love Joan unconditionally. Unconditionally. Oh, maybe is that like. The, or an ice cream it reference? It's, it's, sorry. It's, it's, okay, sorry. Keith's guilty. I thought that was like a Katy Perry it's, thing. It's, it's, Unconditionally. Keith's guilty pleasure is Ben and Jerry's. Yeah. So they said he likes right. I understand. I understand. Listen, that's, that's terrible writing. That's a terrible pun. Very bad. So I don't blame you for that, but... <laughs> falls hard and fast younger people shouldn't be scared of growing older getting older rocks wow. in quotes so he he does he <laughs> does raise his voice in joy often because they gave him all caps rocks with an exclamation point. now we do share a life goal together let me read these fun facts keith is the king of cornhole or 
bags, as he calls it. Of course he calls it bags. And of course he loves cornhole. This is all lining up. Keith's life goal is to play a round of golf at Augusta National. It's, it's the most exclusive course in the world. So that would be awesome. Okay. Well. So Keith. Look at this. Keith had the best time at Stagecoach this past year. He was there so when we were, we were there. there. So we ran into Keith probably. So you and Keith actually, you were working Stagecoach yes. with one of your artists. And, uh, and Keith. Was Keith there. was there and he would play a round of golf with mm-hmm. you. You probably love Keith. Me and Keith would have played golf and gone to stagecoach together. Talk about your daughters. Played bags. Yeah, you're not a cornhole we're guy. Both, no. And we're both girl dads. You know what I mean? Bada bing, bada boom. I'm 6'5". Just on the 6'5 alone, he'll, he'll be stick there around. For a while. Yeah, just because he stands it's out. Just a, it's you just know a big what I mean? presence. It's a big presence. Like, and especially he's got a big personality. It's going to be like, not, oh, no, damn. He's not, he's not going to... No, this is no hate on you, Keith. This is just the reality. You're not going to compete on the looks level because some of these guys are like models. So you're the 6'5", wow, big Evan, personality. Is, <laughs> you, I mean, this is just, just absolutely shredded. I don't mean it to be in a mean way. I just mean my, like, let's just be <laughs> He's real. He's a handsome guy. He's a handsome but, guy, but... So yeah, some of these are, you know... Some of these other guys are definitely better looking, but 6'5". It'd be like five, if I tried out for The, the Bachelor, these Bachelorette girls. Not, like, absolutely no, not. But it's, but it, you know. But it's 6'5", <laughs> is really going to help. 6'5". He's going to be the one at the top. He's like probably going to be. Let Joan the t- be the beautiful one. You be the big imposing one. Maybe there's a nice he's, connection. He's going to be the tallest guy in the room. He's exactly. going to stand out for sure. So there's there's some presence there. Is he hot or is he tall? You know what I mean? Like that whole thing is going on right now. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, well, I think you're a handsome guy. No, handsome dude. No, no, no. I'm just saying like we know. I hear you. I hear you. All right. Well, best of luck to you, best sir. Best of luck to you, sir. You girl dad, Evan. You nailed it. I, am, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. It's one thing to get like their jobs right here and there yeah but like specifically i have to just say girl dad and rancher those are two non uh, uncommon very specific things kind of weird that i nailed it it is i, actually I know old very guys bizarre. i know old guys i guess yeah you're an old guy expert i'm an old what do they call it like a, you know you don't work with older guys a lot i don't which is interesting but i have a you, you think, know you know what it's you you got <laughs> you have old, old guy energy yeah i kind of do i think because i feel like i'm like them i get it I see that. I see the faces. We're like middle aged, practically. Okay, no, we're young. And we're like middle aged, practically. Still. But you've always had old guy yeah. energy. What do you? What, what is it from the Muppets? Oh, I always used to tell Evan when we were first dating. He reminded me of uh, you know the two old men who always sit in the corner of the theater and like throw tomatoes and are like, oh well, yeah, you Marley stink. And Marley. Well, yeah, and well, I song, mean, that's right? that's Muppets Christmas Carol. Oh, right, they okay. they play the Marley Brothers, right? Yeah. Um, and so one of my favorite tunes from that musical. Um, anyway, let's get into it. But um, you remind me have always reminded yeah. me of one of those old guys, right? Except you have a heart of gold, but you. Always kind of. Have, oh, I can be curmudgeony. I can be curmudgeony. You kind of a little crotchety. Yeah. Why is that? You think? You kind of. You know who you are to me, and I was uh. so in love with him. Is um, Luke from Gilmore Girls? The, oh, the Luke d- Skywalker. No. Uh, <laughs> well, Luke. hey, hey, Han Solo. Okay, I'll take. You that. You have Han Solo energy from from Star Wars. Yeah. You have Luke. From the guy Rose, who owns the diner. The, di- the diner Yeah, owner. okay. He's curmudgeon-y too. You have that energy a little bit about it's you. Just, it's just a I defense mechanism, it. y'all. We really want to be fun, but you know, sometimes we don't know how to be, so we just kind of be rah, 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 you know what I mean? So anyway, that's a bit about me. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm old guy. I'm big old guy So you guy can energy. understand. You can pick mm-hmm. up on the, the old the old men energy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, anywho, should we move on to the yes. next guy? Let's move on to next. our next guy, who is Ken. Wow. Ken is very handsome. Ken, okay. Ken is handsome, but he's also kind of like stone. I was going to say, I think he, Ken is a total hottie who doesn't know that yes. he's a hottie. And he's kind of shy and soft-spoken. Yes. And he that jaw gives military, but mm. I don't think so. <laughs> Why? <laughs> the jaw it's like and the you hair. go to the military and then your jaw grows. <laughs> it's true the jog is military and the hair gives military but i don't think that's what he is i think ken gives solo outdoor adventure whoa like he's going out in the outdoors by himself bear grill style but he's like setting deers free from traps like he like oh. whis- he like whispers to nature and he doesn't quite <laughs> That was so gorgeous. He whispers to nature. <laughs> whispers to nature. He speaks the language. Of the trees. And he doesn't quite know 
how to have a great flowing conversation with with people right but he but man the animals respond like the to squirrels him squirrels go nuts the wind answers okay to chill get. out but I think he's going to be like, he's so handsome, but I think he's going to be a little socially awkward, a little shy, not realizing what a stud he is. And he's like a nature guy. Yeah. And so I think work wise, he he's f for his hobby. He's always doing solo adventuring all over the US of A, but his job. <laughs> I mean, you are going so deep, but his job is that he's one of those guys who fixes electrical stuff super high. Where they have to oh. do the crazy climbing. Okay, okay. wow. No, but I'm connecting with my adventure thing, mm. right? He's super brave. Yes. Because those people that have to do, well, I don't even know what they're called, where they have to go fix wires that are like a yeah. hundred yeah, feet they, in the air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the wildest things I've ever yeah. seen. It gives me crazy anxiety. That's what Ken does. Okay, wow. Go ahead. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I mean, that is so specific and wild. He's a, he <laughs> speaks to the trees and fixes electrical wires. He whispers wires. to the wind. Ken, another great boomer name. Um, Truly, I'm All gonna name. I'm gonna say Ken doesn't. Well, first of all, he always dates very talkative women because okay. he's so quiet. He's so so quiet. he just he's a big listener. Yeah. Ken, oh, I'm having a hard time. The all black is interesting. It means I, I'm getting New York. I'm getting New York, really. Yeah. And I'm getting business owner in New York. I know it's completely different than you. I'm wow. going opposite. Business owner in New York. Business owner. There's he, no way. In the business he owns is he's an investor. What? Yes. You are out to He's from lunch. the Midwest. This man. But he's really smart. I, I don't doubt that he is, you know. No, but, but Ken's like Ken, but, Ken's but like one of those guys. He grew up in the New Midwest. York, yes. A New York investor. Wall Street. Wall Street. What? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Not They're, Wall Street in the greasy way. Not like not suit and tie Wall Street. He's like big money guy. The, the all black is is like billionaire energy to me. Like he doesn't have to try. Like he's he's understating his wealth. He has a pain in his eyes that means that he has seen He's seen loss. He's seen mountains. He's like seen the beauty. God. He's seen the beauty. He's, seen, he's got pain in his eyes because he's seen mountains. No, no, but in the way that like he's like he's so introverted in his thinking that like he's seen like the the snow caps melt and like seen like okay, is he Gandalf or is he Ken? I'm so confused right now. I mean, you're going so deep in this guy's like arc as like a straight up wizard in the woods, and nothing about this guy's a buzz haircut. And a military jaw, like, and you're saying he he talks to the trees and is a wizard from the north. Like, what? I'm just in saying, the world? It's, he gives me bear We're grills. So deep. He gives me bear grills. Okay, got it. I got okay. it. Okay, okay, I can see like bear grills. Green beret, oh, maybe. Okay. If okay. there was any, maybe that's what the jaws from. Okay. All right. That's where the jaw grew. I. <laughs> that's where he grew his jaw. If you if you're in the trees long enough, your jaw grows. <laughs> okay i am very curious to see who's right but cliffhanger before we see we have to take a quick pause and then we'll find out okay. if i'm right about these yes. tree whispers or yes. if he's just some investor in new york yes, some yes. billionaire okay yeah, really rich guy yeah, yeah all right but we gotta take a quick pause so I downloaded an astrology app to find out more about Joan's chart after finding out that she's a Capricorn. Um, I wanted to dig in more. But then after I realized I had already downloaded numerous astrology apps previously uh, that I am paying a subscription for, and I don't need to be paying for seven astrology apps, okay? I love astrology, but I don't need the paying for seven apps apps part. Thank goodness I have my fave savior rocket money to remind me, find and cancel all those subscriptions I don't want to be paying for for me. I love rocket money so much. Managing finances can feel complicated and time consuming, right? But it doesn't have to be. Rocket money simplifies everything. Rocket money is a personal finance app that helps find and cancel your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending and helps lower your bills so you can grow your savings. 
Yeah, we are all in love with Rocket Money in this house. With Rocket Money, you can see all your subscriptions in one place and know exactly where your money is going. And for any you don't want anymore, Rocket Money can help you cancel them with just a few taps. Rocket Money has so many amazing features, like you get alerts if bills increase in price, there's unusual spending activity, or if you're close to getting over budget. Also, the new goals feature automatically saves money for you without you having to think about it. Whether your goal is to pay off credit card debt, put away money for a house, or just build your savings, Rocket Money makes it easy. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate lower bills for you, sometimes by up to 20%. So they automatically scan your bills to find opportunities to save. Then you can ask them to negotiate for you. I find this feature to be incredible. I love it so much. (laughs) Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of 500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. They sure have saved us a whole lot of money. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash momdad. That's rocketmoney.com slash momdad rocketmoney.com slash mom dad okay ken it is time to reveal are you gandalf who's correct or are you wall street willie i mean i don't know massachusetts property management treasurer (laughs) okay so that means he handles the money for a property management company probably treasurer you know it's always a funny treasurer is a very funny like uh where it sounds fake it sounds like he deals in pirate coin i feel really at a loss it, yeah i feel miley really... cyrus stan i mean i love okay evan i'm not i'm not gonna lie to you i feel really disappointed yeah babe, you were i'm, I'm sorry. sure ken you're fantastic but i really was feeling a specific energy and now i'm gonna have to re-get to know you okay who are you really treasurer boston man by the okay, way am i Peabody. the only one that, that, got, that always kind of feels like boston is a state <laughs> i don't know you know what i mean it's like it's like i always think just boston is its own place and like boston oh yeah i guess boston is in massachusetts anyway um <laughs> it's against family friends describe him as honest adventurous okay, and, and active, active like, like really, really active. active oh runs marathons plays runs tennis loves cycling okay so okay. You're, you got I was something more picturing there. like the woods but yeah you I mean, know you, you're, you painted him as you're, gandalf you're very the gray active. looking for a partner has a good sense of humor and keep up with his on-the-go lifestyle he says he still feels young even in his 60s. Well, he's 60, not in his 60s. I was Come just thinking the same bio. thing. In your 60s. Like, I'm 28. Would you say that I'm in my 20s? Yes, I would say that. No, if you were 20, would you say, are they in their 20s or they're right. just 20? Well, that's what I'm saying. I'd be like, they're 20. It's like, when 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 are you in your 60s? 63? I say 63. 63, you're in your 60s. Yeah. yeah. 62, you're still kind of not quite there. Yeah. We're just, we're just, you know, trying to turn back the clock here um and is a very happy place in life ken's heart is open excited about Loves watching ted lasso love that cheering on boston sports teams so he's like a sport a boston sports guy ken he is told to- he's a bad driver but he's not buying it so he's a horrible driver city guy oh so sure. public transit yeah grew up Ken's, Ken's greatest dream is to throw out the first pitch of him. Okay, so I, I'm I'm reading you, Ken. I was very wrong. You're a Boston boy. You're yeah. a total Boston boy. You love Ted Lasso. Your dream is to throw out the first pitch. You're super active. You're running the marathons. You're cycling. You're doing all these things. You know, you love Boston sports team. You're you're a, you're a Boston boy. Can I, can I make it? I, a, I hope he has a little bit of an accent. Right. You know, I love. I don't. Um, I will say Boston. Him being a massive Miley Cyrus stan makes him more interesting to me than exciting. If you're running marathons, playing tennis, cycling, that means you're not doing a lot of talking and interacting. You're doing a lot of quiet pain. I don't know if you've ever watched The Bachelor or Bachelorette, but they force people to like run and talk at the same time. So maybe Ken is an absolute chatterbox and he like loves maybe, to run but, and but talk But there's to something about whenever I see someone who's like, talk. like I've known a couple buddies who are like, Oh, they like they're like hiking Mount Kilimanjaro, Jarno, and they're like spending money to like hike mountains and stuff. 
They're kind of quiet. They're person. kind of chilled. They well, spend a lot maybe, of time we said maybe in their he's thoughts. Quiet. I'm just going to say this to you, though. He runs marathons, plays tennis, and loves cycling. These are all interactive. Like okay. these are these are groups. You have your mar- your running group, your cycling okay. group. You all get coffee and eat afterwards and talk. Yeah. You play tennis. That's a talk. I, I think yeah. he's he I okay. uh, he hit me as he was going to be very quiet and whisper to the wind. But I think he's going to be okay. a, a chatty, more of a chatty guy all than right. we think. I don't love and, cycling. And, and he's Boston. Yeah. You know, he's probably, he's Boston. He's going to be Boston. Yeah. Okay. You can't have that accent and not be a talker. It's kind of true. I just feel like that kind of goes hand in hand. Peabody, Massachusetts. Peabody. Um, But I will say property management treasurer. Treasurer hits me as like more of the quiet individual. Yeah. Accountant energy. But interesting. All right. I think it's a non-starter. We'll see, but he's a good looking dude. He is a good looking guy, but I don't think he'll have a personality stand out. We'll see. All right. All right, right, next. Next. Next, we have Kim. 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 Kim is. Kim. I mean, that is. It. He's got like a. Kim's. Kim's a little naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Kim's got a secret. And he doesn't want to tell anyone about it. Kim is looking naughty. Okay. Kim has tea. Kim does know something that we don't know, and he's dying to tell us. Mm-hmm. Maybe Kim, you know what? Maybe Kim and Joan have gone on a hinge date before, yeah. and he's like, guess what? She's going to recognize me. Oh, interesting. Kim laughs a lot. Yeah. Big laugher. Love the shirt. I was going to say the shirt is Certain like... people I, can wear polos better than others, and he wears it very well. I'm trying... I'm digesting this shirt... This feels, God, everyone just feels very rich to me. Kim I feels know. very rich. It's a rich backdrop and a rich shirt and rich hair and rich teeth, rich Kim eyes. Kim is giving me absolute trust fund king. Whoa. Like, like Kim. He's a trust fund kid? Yes. Like, like he comes from he money. He came from cash. Wow. Yeah. You know, you know what? Trust fund kids do have an energy about them that says like, I'm not really worried Look about Look how anything. he's leaning and smirking and laughing with his secret. His secret is the fact of he knows how much money in his, is in his parents' bank account. Mm. that has been left his for him parents. <laughs> yeah, yes. he's fucking 65 years old I'm like, well, he's like dad hey, send me some money hey, his dad's 105 yeah his parents <laughs> <laughs> he's like dad, he's my, like, dad my, I, my account is running low are you charging me rent my account is running he's low like, <laughs> but okay here's the thing though i think kim kim <laughs> stop. i think kim is a trust fund baby <laughs> who loves to golf um but i also think that he is not a trust fund baby who hasn't worked hard i think kim is a doctor i think he's a doctor trust fund kid wow so like but he's a doctor in in a casual way like he knows he doesn't need to be a doctor but he loves a little like i got my patients who rely on me yes and they need me but he's gonna be Uh, a doctor he's gonna be you know what though no no no. but he's not like he's not like heart uh, internal he's podiatrist he's he's a he's a foot doctor we go for the feet so it's like you know maybe not like a a uh, uh, super tragic situation sure. where it's all kind of like, oh, you know, I got my bunions he's coming just in today. He's messed up toes. Yeah, and he's helping with with some bunions. He's he's helping out with a bunion or two. King of the bunions. He's the bunion king. There it is. Wow. That's why. That's why I guess. <laughs> is the bunion? What's like a? Is there a, is there a royal name? The that's bunion to be? baron. Oh my! <laughs> the baron of bunions. That is. And funny. maybe he's created a cream. And made even more money. Okay. I'm going to say that Kim is in fashion. He's friends with Ralph Lauren. Oh, I like he this. Is, Wait, uh, I like that a lot. He's a world traveler and he designs bags and he's a, he's a, he's, he's a, a fashion, fashion designer. Yeah. <gasps> he's a, no, no. He's like a fashion director. He's like a guy who runs a brand. You know what? I actually really like that. I feel like you may be on to something with that. He grew up with some of the the most iconic guys. I feel like you may be on to something with that. Went to school in Paris. Kim is getting like so much more exciting and mysterious. Also the name Kim. Yeah. Makes you feel like he comes from a family that is... A loaded family. Yeah, loaded. Like there is some elegance there. Like this guy is... This is what I'm saying. Like you can't fake... Like even if you get money later on, you still are who you are. But if you were were always around money, you can't... That's just something that when you see someone with that, it's like they have a different energy. I'm I'm telling you, Evan. He's a a trust fund kid. His name is Kim. It's like Kim Kelsey... 
names like this are like trust fund yeah. like like a gentleman an older gentleman named kelsey like that yeah you come exactly from money. there's some elegance there All okay right, I'm, you know what i like i think you're gonna be more right but i'm gonna stick to the trust fund now a podiatrist bunion baron the bunion baron the bunion baron i cannot right. wait to see him on the show and call him that kim what are you seattle wow. washington retired <laughs> navy captain okay we are wrong L older well i get why he has almost 70 um wow 70 he looks amazing mm -hmm. the retired naval officer loves but sailboat time on his sailboat and dreams of taking joan okay sailboat that's rich also, vibes. by the way, you can 100% be a retired Navy captain and also and like, have like a trust fund family. 100%. Him is a man of integrity who says he loves making the most of his life. He's sincere and generous. He's a proud father and grandfather. We've got another grand, grandpop. Um, he's ready for love and hope to make his partner feel special. His ideal date night includes cooking dinner together and enjoying it in the backyard. We haven't seen anyone say he ideal night is go to a nice restaurant. We've seen a couple. We ha restaurant? Yeah. No, go to a restaurant? Yeah. There's well, like, go out to a new restaurant. Go to, oh, yeah, we've seen a I? few. Um, Astral projecting. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> he loves an old fashioned, of course. And he's an excellent to whistler. That is an old guy thing, this thing. Yeah, how can you whistle <laughs> so well? That's an old guy thing. Hey. You know what? <laughs> it's a lost form. I guess when you didn't have TikTok, you just sit around and whistle. Whittle and whistle? Whittle and whistle. I mean, honestly. <laughs> To be honest with you, that's a great old guy podcast name, Whittle and Whistle. <laughs> like, or, or you know what it is? It's like it's like two two radio hosts <laughs> that are in their seventies. Whittle and Whistle. Welcome to the welcome to the Bunyan Hour with Whittle and Whistle. We're talking about our aches and pains. Well, I Listen, like I, I like Whittle and Whistle, and I do <sighs> think that um it should be some two of the gentlemen from this show yeah. should start a podcast after called Whittle and Whistle. Whittle and I agree whistle. with you. Clam cakes and cornhole um you know i'm gonna say a very underwhelming bio he's an excellent whistler his favorite um uh, his favorite food as a child was clam cakes oh that's where that came from yeah that is a wild fact by the way rich clam cakes his favorite food as a child was clam cakes See, he's just a seattle guy he's just born on the you know what i mean no, 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 no. The clam king Love to, would, love to learn how to like, that's not a fun fact. Anyone would, you know what I'm saying? Kim would that's love like to saying, learn how to play the piano. It's fact. like, well, you know what, Kim? You should also you should that's try some a, YouTube a fun tutorials. Fact. It's like, and Evan would love to learn how to sail. You're like, okay, again, that's not a fact. Like, knowing how to sail is a fact. Knowing yeah. how to play the piano is a fun fact. Yeah, Random I could desires. say I would love to, you know, learn how to be a world class novelist, but. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is what it's it really is. A piano, this piano, whole thing Kim, is very underwhelming Kim, to me. Reach for your dreams. A piano is very attainable. Very attainable. You can hundred percent attain. Like you, you can get. You can accomplish that dream. And I say, if go for it. You believe in yourself? Kim. You can do anything. You yeah. can set your mind to. It. <laughs> come on, come on, Ken. Or yeah, and guess what? Kim. If you learned how to to play the piano well, you could whistle along with it. Mm -hmm. You know, just just get your fingers to do what your mouth knows how to do. Oh my god, <sighs> that sounds like a dating profile. <laughs> Jess just absolutely cracked herself up, you guys. If you're not watching right now, she is crying laughing. <laughs> Sweating. She's laughing so hard. <laughs> well, I'm sweating because it's hot, and I don't know right. why I chose to wear a sweatshirt. Um, um, okay. I, I mean, uh, sorry I like about that, Kim. Kim but like, that was really, the, that was out of pocket. The, the for picture me. of Kim told me there was a lot more going on than this i'll be honest with you it's a very kind of a short little yeah. thing but you know i'm gonna say middle of the packer at this point yeah we had fantasies and it's fine yeah it is what sometimes, it is uh, sometimes you're let down it is what it is well he didn't let us no, no, down no, 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 but you, you know, know. We, we we created i mean we the bar we set was pretty the, the bunion yeah. baron and a fashion god from perry was you know yeah. it was a well, we high, ended up with just bar. retired guy who sails <laughs> okay. he's a retired navy captain that That's is very cool a big, big thing um okay next yes next, next. Next. Let's move on to our next. Oh, well, oh, here he I is. know you. Zeus himself. It's Mark, Apollo, Zeus, it's Apollo's... every Greek god that I can think of. Yeah. He is a Marvel movie. He yes. is that beard, everything. He's seen many moons set, <laughs> many suns rise, many kings fall, many legends being born. Mark is not his name. Mark is the name we've given him. Mark. He was never born. <laughs> oh, he will never die. He is what has been 
and what will continue to be until the last <laughs> sunset of our world. Until he forms a new world, Mark is with us now. He was never born, he will never die is something I hope is written about me one day. Mark is etched from the stone behind him. God, Mark is so... For he created the stone. (laughs) Mark is so so handsome. He's he's absolutely Thor. He is. He's Thor older. He's just... He's Thor's dad. He is Thor's dad. He's, He's the main... God character in every movie we've ever seen of all time. Yes. Like, Mark, you could leave this show right now and just go knock on Universal's door and be like, what movie? You got a new gladiator. You got a new gladiator coming out? I'll be the king. I mean, yep. like, like he's I'll play the god in Gladiator, yes. you know? Okay, so we know Mark. We know Mark well. Yes. Mark is um Kelsey, who uh Joey and Kelsey ended up together on Joey's season. It is Kelsey's father. He uh, lost his wife, uh, Kelsey's mom, yeah, a little while ago. Um, he's, I believe, a retired. V- he's a vet, okay. I believe. Um, and when we saw him on the show, I mean, everyone was like, Who "We is fell in dad? love." He's so so gorgeous, but he yeah. also was had this very strong, calm energy, but was also so kind and and emotional yeah but he also was relaxed like he wasn't like yeah. wound tight he was just kind of like i'll say this all of us who have single moms yeah. were texting our mothers immediately yeah. and i'm raising my hand okay i texted my mom immediately and i was like watch abc now yeah slide into this man's dms like this guy i do he's have a, catch. a thought though i do have a okay. thought do you want to share that thought now yes. or are we going to pause it we're going to pause it Oh my God, a cliffhanger A cliffhanger. Thought. Okay, family, we're going to take one more quick pause and then get to Evan's thought about yes. Mark. And it better be a nice one. It's a nice thought. Are you sure? Yes. I don't believe You're you. You're going to love this thought. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> All right. One more quick pause. Mm-hmm. Today's show is brought to you by Tushy because it's time to give up wiping with toilet paper. Okay, we've stuck with toilet paper because it's familiar, but all it does is smear poop and bacteria around, leaving you feeling unclean and uncomfortable, and we're done with that, okay? We are a house that uses tushy bidets. Washing with a tushy bidet, you get a targeted stream of fresh water to get you two times cleaner than wiping ever could. We've been talking about a lot of these retired men. Well, it's time to retire that outdated routine and upgrade to a fresh, confident clean, all right, family? Setup is easy, like 10 minutes to install type of easy, and the results absolute game changer once you've experienced a tushy bidet your butt will never settle for less and this is something we can all connect on regardless of age right again we're talking about some of these golden guys to us to the youth we all poop we'd all do better with a tushy all right i gotta say i'm a very clean person when it comes to my body a multiple shower today type guy so the toilet paper thing did ick me out sometimes and after getting a tushy bidet in our home i will never go back to pure tp i feel so clean all the time because of this tushy bidet i mean tushy smart spray nozzle provides a targeted stream that removes 99 percent of those nasty particles keeping your behind and hands bacteria free so yeah that's why i'm always feeling really clean But it's not just about the cleanliness. Tushy is a game changer for your health, too. Regular use can help prevent chronic issues like hemorrhoids, UTIs, and irritation. It's helped my fissure. You know, we yeah, know, yeah. Um, and it's <laughs> you all know, yeah. <laughs> and it's more cost effective than wet wipes or TP. But day users report using up to 80 percent less toilet paper. Plus, every Tushy bidet comes with a 30 day hassle free return and a 12 month warranty. It's a one time purchase that can change your whole life. Feel shower fresh when you need it most and join the two million butts who already switched to Tushy. For a limited time, our listeners get 10 percent off their first bidet day order when you use code mom dad at checkout that's 10 percent off your first bidet order at h-e-l-l-o-t-u-s-h-y dot com with promo code mom dad that's hello tushy.com promo code mom dad okay back to yeah. whatever evan's thought is that might upset me about no, mark. no no, no. it's not about ahead. mark it's about the pressure 
of uh, someone coming into the season that everyone's like, we cannot wait for Mark. But of course, that I feel that like would be really. Intense. I feel like him and Joan are. I actually feel like he's going to go early. Yeah, because there's just the what, remember what it was happened. Like Matt James's mom, exactly. Matt James's mom gone right away. There's something about like when wild. everyone's like, here they come, you're gonna love, and then it's like you you're kind of like you've almost blown it out of proportion. They have to blow your mind to be like competitive. Yeah. If you don't have an immediate connection, it's almost like bye. Because I just feel like there's a lot of pressure. You know, people put a lot of pressure on those relationships, and I feel like. They're kind of death sentences when it comes to the show. There is a lot of pressure, but I will say, unless it's something where, you know, Mark goes night one. So we saw Mark at Jen's finale and Joan was there as well, which to me, they were sitting like two couples apart. Right. Which to me tells me they're not together. I don't think they're well, going to they have put them together. I mean, what do you, like, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't think that they're going to put, I'm, I'm saying, I don't oh, think they weren't sitting together. If they were together, they'd be not even on the same show. Together, I think kind of if thing. Joan and Mark end up together, the show wouldn't have both of them show I, up for that finale. Right, I see what you're saying. Um, because then it would be a little bit, I don't know. There's yeah. you, you could maybe sense the energy sure. or any, something. Um, so I do not think that he is the final guy, but I do think he's next bachelor. Ah, love that. Unless someone comes in and absolutely sweeps America off of their feet and it is undeniable and the show has to like give us what we want, which Mark seems like an amazing option. Yeah. I think the show, if if Joey and Kelsey are still together, and we hope they are, they seem like a lovely couple, if they are still together by the time they film The Golden Bachelor, there's no way the show isn't like, let us show you our legacy yeah. and what we have done. Yeah. And look at the family. It's generational, our mm. show. They're going to want him to find somebody so they can that. say, Kelsey, yeah, like yeah. it's worked for generations. Agreed, agreed. Um, let's see what the bio right, says, though. Let's do the bio says. Uh, yep, I'll Army Vet, yeah. 57. He's young. Wow, that is young. He's young. Him and Joan do look like gods, though. When you when you like watch the movie Troy or something, you're like... Yeah, she looks they, like Helen. That's and what I mean. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's ready for love after loss. You may recognize. Yep. Kelsey's dad, Joey's uh, future father-in-law, inspired by Kelsey. Five kids. Um, he's em- empathetic and warm, and has dedicated. These are fake facts. Memory. Terrified of ostriches. Favorite movies. Uh, you know, I don't know. The how? Wait, how are those fake facts? Those facts are so standard. Why? How would they be fake? He's terrified of ostriches, so hopefully they don't make him go to an ostrich farm. Uh, his favorite movie is Elf, which I love. Love that. Love that he loves Elf. You know why? Because that means our man loves Christmas. Yes, that's true. And he true. loves the holiday season, which connects with my heart. And also, it's a great funny movie. And he can, he's kind of Santa. I mean, like Elf. And then he he's can wiggle like, his ears for the children. You know what I mean? He can wiggle. That's the other fun fact. I can also wiggle my ears. You can too. We can always. Is that wiggling ears. or is that just moving? Maybe he can just go... Maybe <laughs> <laughs> that'd be sick. He could actually wiggle. He's him. a hot Santa though. He is, man. Santa. Um, yeah. Wouldn't mind some of his presents under my tree. Oh my! Kind of miss that, babe. The, <laughs> I didn't miss it. I just you kind of really dropped the ball on that. Realize he's not alone. Oh, he loved watching the Golden. This makes me emotional. He loved watching the Golden Bachelor because it made him feel, made him realize he's not mm-hmm. alone in his grief. And there are others also hoping to find love again. Loves traveling with his kids. Well, Mark, get ready to travel because I don't think you end up with Joan, but I think you're going to be the next Golden Bachelor and you will be doing a lot of traveling. Well, I like Louisiana. It. I forgot about that. Well, Mark, right. best of luck. Yeah. We love you. And I uh, can't wait to see you on our screen, sir. Next. Next, we have oh, Michael. Michael wow. Bolton. <laughs> Not Michael Bolton. Uh, Simply Michael. Mike, is Michael a real person? Michael is. Okay. Michael is the Bennett of the Golden Bachelorette, meaning he is going to be talking nonstop about how smart he is. Mm. We're going to hear about the fact that he went to Yale or Harvard oh, over and over again. And we're like, Michael, no offense, but you are in your 60s. That was a while ago. Doesn't mean that doesn't take away from it. But can you stop? But he's not going to be like talking about education constantly and be a professor. Uh. He's going to be the guy who, I don't know, he's got like a job maybe a psychiatrist yeah maybe psychiatrist Mm. i was gonna say or accountant maybe a psychiatrist and he's just talking about emotional intelligence 
all the time. I feel like Michael's looking at me. I know it's making like, me feel I'm kind of like weird. getting lost in it a little bit. So it's kind of scaring me, but also like, you know what I mean? But I that mean, could be like, that's like psychiatrist energy where I'm, he's I'm, just I'm, like, I'm kind of like avoiding about, his eye contact yeah, right he's now. like, so Evan, tell, tell us about your childhood. You know what? I'm going to agree with you on and this. And he calls, he calls him himself us. He's like, tell us about your childhood. Us? <laughs> the hell? That's terrifying. Us? Like who else is here? Me and us. <laughs> tell us. Um, first of all, that's really terrifying to think about someone saying us when no one else is in the room. Um, second of all, I like your idea of psychiatry. He is a doctor of the mind. But I feel like he's going to be really obnoxious about it. Mm. He's not going to just be like, you know, sitting back, observing the men, taking in what's going on, maybe giving out some thoughtful advice. It's going to be like, well, as a doctor from Yale's psychiatric program, I can tell you that you're a fucking idiot. Like, I think it's going to be, I think he's going to be a, the tattler. He's going to stir up some drama in the okay. house. I like that. I think. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Are you just going to steal my idea? Uh, or do I don't, you have? He's just scaring me with his eye contact <laughs> right now. So I'm just a little rattled. I don't really know what to do. But I, I agree that... I'm going to say he's, I like the psychiatry. I can't get away from it. It's the jacket too. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I am leaning into the jacket. Mm -hmm. The jacket gives me cover of a psychiatric book. He's tall. He does look tall. He looks very tall. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I can't get a read. I cannot get a read on the really? guy. I'm lost. I feel like I, I know Michael. Okay. I really do. Okay. Want to see? Let's see. Let's see who you are, Michael. North Carolina wow. retired banking CEO. Okay. Did I say something about money before? Mm -mm. Yeah, I said accountant. That's you did. Not, yeah, I said accountant, and then I changed oh, it to psychiatrist. Okay. I, I was I was there okay, for a second. You were there. You were sensing something. I was something. there for a second. He's a sweet soul. <laughs> okay, sorry, Michael. The banking exec is a dad no. of two sons. He loves very much, and they both hope Chicago, he can though. find love again. So he's from North Carolina? I guess. There's a place called Denver, North Carolina. Whoa. Michael is compassionate, creative, and intelligent, and he loves learning new things. When he's not working, he enjoys reading, watching movies, and exploring Chicago's botanical gardens. When it comes to dating, Michael says he makes sure to listen and learn about his date rather than talking too much. Oh, so so he's either quiet. he's a liar about that, he talks way too much, yeah. and then his ex said he never stops talking and never listens, so he's making a point to say, I do listen. But listen. Or it's real. It says that he loves reading and botanical gardens, which also says one of two things. Either he is a... He is a gentle, sweet soul and loves to like stroll through the daffodils and then like read, which is very dreamy. Very or dreamy. he's like, I'm smart and I'm going to shove it down your throat and I don't watch TV. I read books and I stroll through nature in the botanical gardens yeah. and like gives you all the scientific names for it. But you didn't ask. Yeah. I can't read it. Oh, Michael went to Lollapalooza three times. All in his 50s. Okay. Michael is terrified of talent shows. So Michael is a Swifty. He's a Swifty. Okay, this is really throwing me off. <laughs> terrified Michael of talent shows is interesting because I do understand that like as like I would be I don't have like a specific talent. Yeah. Like I don't have something. Yes, you can. You're a that, great like, singer. I appreciate it, but like I can't that wouldn't be interesting enough well, in you my could, mind. Like, play an instrument and sing very easily. That's true. I guess if I couldn't do that that though. I would be terrified of a talent show. Yeah, like, no, what do you do? I, yeah, I you don't know, know what, what I mean? to do. I don't know what to do. It's like terrifying. So I get that. So he's not a guy who has like, you know, he's a retired banking guy. He's not like a guy who like, you know, can do the splits or whatever. But Swifty, I'm going to say he's a Swifty because it's hot right now. He wants and, to get the ladies. And some of the like, you know, ladies he used to work with loved Taylor Swift. And so he was like, oh, I love Taylor Swift too. It's great. You know what I mean? I don't know though. I will say that the the one to Lollapalooza three times in his fifties and him being that's a Swiftie true he's a music is guy. making him more complex kind of a to festival me. kind of a kind of a dropping well, acid like guy <laughs> he loves dropping like, what does it say he loves dropping uh, acid listen I know rolling. I know Lollapalooza is more maybe more of that but I'm like Swifty and dropping acid doesn't go hand no, in that's hand that's true um but the the, the the banking CEO and then. I don't know. Interesting. Maybe he's just kind of a carefree, quiet guy. Like Botanical Gardens, reading, Lollapalooza, Swifty. 
Maybe he's just a quiet. Maybe a quiet guy. Sixty-five. Quiet, he's guy. he looks younger than that. I can't yeah. really. You know, there's something about him that kind of looks a little younger than sixty-five. Maybe he got youthful energy going yeah. to Lollapalooza. Well, Lollapalooza, Lollapalooza in your 53, 53 times is kind of wild. I do agree. I think I think the learning to listen is a new thing, and I I uh, think that that's something he's working on. Yeah. Because why else would you bring that up? To True. Random. Rather than talking to, I think it's something he's working on. <laughs> well, Michael, we'll see. Are we'll you see. a chatty Kathy? Are you a chatty Michael, or are you a uh, quiet a Quinn? Quiet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next. <sighs> next. Oh, oh, now this is what I'm talking, talking about. Pablo. Oh my. Pablo is a writer. There's no question God. about it. Pablo's a writer. Pablo. He sits there. He he, he does the thing where he takes his glasses off. And then like rubs his eyes while he's writing, thinking about kind of his novel or Evan, what he's working on. I'm not going to lie to you. And Pablo, I, I apologize. I'm not trying to be weird. If one day you and I separate. You're hitting Pablo up? Pablo is like, as I, like, that's like my dream. Like as I am getting older, like that's like the dreamiest guy to me. Pablo that I've ever writes seen. by a window. Pablo is like the dreamiest guy. Pablo? Cigarette burning next to the <laughs> yes, computer. Uh, yes. Pablo is like, to me, he writes, but that's like not what his job is. I think Pablo is a professor, but he's like a professor of art literature. And Pablo is your the, the most incredible professor you've ha ever had in your life. He's that professor in your life that changes your life. Mm. You know, you have that one person. Like I have this one professor that stands out that like changed my entire way of thinking. Pablo is that guy. It's got to be like art history or something. He's the type of professor who in front of his class, he when he reads the poem, he cries uh. when he reads it. And you've got like chills all over your body. Okay. I'm, 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 I understand that a little bit, but what I'm seeing is that he is a writer first. He's also, don't look at him like that. <laughs> he's also a, um, but he's, he's, he's Indiana Jones energy to me. So he, he's a professor, but only when he's in town. Oh, okay. So he's not Traveling on a project. World, yeah. So he's like a journalist and a writer. So when he's not working on something. I don't get journalist. He's I like, get, he's, I'm getting like, I'm getting like, he's in Italy working on a book, doing research for something. So he's not teaching. And then when he's back in America, that's when he teaches. So he teaches like once every year, once every two he years. He comes in as like a special. Exactly. Yeah. But he has to be a, he has to be a professor in some. Okay. I like it. Should we I, see? Evan, I love him. He's got so much personality just from this picture. Like Joan. You better, I, mean, I don't even know anything about Pablo, but you better choose Pablo. I'm getting art. I'm getting, okay. So I'm going to say art history, okay. professor, writer. I mean, like in that world, Got but I'll, 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 I'll go professor. I'll Got stand it. by professor. And okay. are you going to stand writer. by writer? Yeah. Writer, okay. journalist. Okay. Pablo, give us what you're from. Whoa. Retired UN agency director. A man Cambridge. of the world. Cambridge. Cambridge. Retired UN agency director. I literally have chills all over my body. He's a man of the world spends his day saving lives and his evenings curled up on the couch watching reruns of his favorite sitcoms. When he isn't volunteering as an EMT, it, when he isn't volunteering Whoa. as an EMT, Paulo, who's originally from Buenos Aires, enjoys visiting his kids and grandkids in California and New York. Running ultra marathons. Ultra marathons at 63 and watching rugby. Pablo is also. He cries. Oh, the Pablo is also a sucker for a rom com and isn't afraid to admit that he cries in almost all romantic scenes. He's a big believer that we can learn, play, and explore new things at any age. And he can't wait for the opportunity to meet Joan. He has a degree in geographical engineering. He, this man. He's an international man of mystery for sure. He has a, a tough time controlling himself around ice cream. Oh, Pablo, oh, behave. Behave, Pablo. Pablo doesn't have a travel bucket list because he wants to go everywhere. Yeah, she's not going to like him. Too much. Too much. What? He's too much. This How is too can you not fall in love with this man? No, the no, no. Moment? Romantically, it's it con conceptually. Yes, you're not a woman, but he's too much. Like she's 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 just her and her kids. She's from chilling. Maryland, but I know they're both from Maryland. I'm just though. saying he's Cambridge. I'm just saying he he is he 
is far too it's got too much going on too dynamic she is a make sure everyone's okay grandma energy he's jet setting rugby ultra marathons emt un director engineer travel you know what i'm saying but like who's, who says this that, is too much she doesn't want that la- a little bit later in her life now that her kids are older and the grandkids then once they get a little older he's, Evan, he's francis malmon i'm in love with i understand him. <laughs> he's francis malmon if you don't know who francis malmon is no big deal my favorite chef um he's a he's a uh where's he from patagonia and he uh, uh, owns an island and cooks on the island and blah 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 yeah but this man is, is that's, this man that's no, that's francis malmon that's i mean that's the chef that's like what this man is like for the people He's like for sure. UN director saving lives EMT at this age. Like he's like sacrificing his heart, mind, and soul. Doesn't say I'm around on every weekend. Saving lives says I'm just sitting around watching rom coms. I mean What I'm saying is is he's available for you. Yeah, I I mean I swear to God. (laughs) I swear to God. He is my dream man. Yeah, he's gone. He's my dream man. No, he's absolutely dreamy. He's he's Harrison Ford, he's everything, but he's gone. His life is too, he's too, the fact that he's even on this show is like, his his kids put him up for this. No, look at that. He's he's a romantic. He's probably the guy on set who believes that this could be his love story. Okay. We'll see. We, we truly have a disagreement here. I don't know if she's going to be, I, I, you might be right where he might just be too complex. He might be too busy. He might be too honestly intimidating like he didn't you know pablo i you are i am a fan but i would be intimidated like with a background like that and everything that he can do and 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 what he sacrificed and ultra marathons and i i would be like i don't think i can live up to this guy but man (laughs) i love i love that i love that we just saw his face and like we immediately were like this guy's got a lot going on and he does like that's it's, it's so interesting when you see this. Like certain people, you, you can see their cre- you can see their life and their career on their face, and, it, and, their, and their charisma style. just like dr- jumps mm-hmm. off the page. I'm in love with you, Pablo. Yeah, we'll see. Next, next, Pascal. Wow. Okay, hold on. Pascal is next. Okay, hold on. Let me give you. I'm gonna give tell you a tale right now. Okay, so wow. buckle up. Pascal was Pablo's roommate in boarding school growing up. Okay. okay? But they are, and they they love each they're other. Opposites. They're friends, but they are complete opposites. Pablo has dedicated himself to serving people, reading, writing, learning, geographical engineering, and Pascal Smashes. is a <laughs> ladies' man. Pascal is Harrison Ford. Look at that smirk. Look at that hair, that pose, that beautiful, gorgeous face. Pascal has spent so many years traveling the world and just absolutely wooing. And here's the thing about Pascal. He's not like, he's not like a, like a playboy in the way that you'd say like a fuck boy. Pascal is just like, I can't help it that beautiful women are always in my bed. Pascal is honest about it. He's like, he goes, he goes, my love, I, I can't be tied down. I can't be tethered. Like, but then it's like, please Pascal. And Pascal gives you the best lovemaking of your life after the best (laughs) meal you've ever had and leaves a note on the nightstand Roman- with, with some sort of romantic poem and you never hear from him again. Not because he's... But, but Pascal but, but Pascal will always be honest with you about who he is. Yeah. So Pascal you know what you're getting into. Pascal is retired James Bond. Pascal, you know what it is? It is. I know technically Pablo was not an art teacher or writer, but if, if Pablo was this art lit writer and teacher, to, to that of Pablo, Pascal is is the man buying the fine art. Yeah. Pascal. Now, Pascal might be our trust fund baby. Pascal's family, money. He has traveled the world. He has done every interesting thing you possibly can do. And he has so many fine art Pablo pieces in his penthouse. And he, by the way, he has a penthouse in, in seven different cities in the world. Pablo's always telling Pascal, it's too risky. It's my friend. And Pascal is always doing the risky. I mean, he's it's sexy, risky, jet setting, art dealing, you know what I mean? Like he's rubbing shoulders with the you know, the guys who own the you know what I mean? The rulers I, of the world. I can literally see there's like a gorgeous cafe and 
Pablo sitting there with pen and paper with a uh, a cappuccino. I want to see Pascal in a nice, in a good, good pair of glass oh, sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. But Pablo's just writing cafe, having a nice cappuccino. And Pascal comes and sits in and Pablo's like, you're late, Pascal. And he just, he orders an espresso. Pablo <laughs> has his late. cappuccino. He orders an espresso. He's like, you're late, Pascal. And Pascal's like my friend. Uh, you know, I always am. And he pulled up in some sort of like Jeep. I see, I'm picturing old... him on like a, like a motorcycle. Or oh, there you like go something. too. Yeah. But like a like a sleek one. God, I I mean, God, if they're not friends, th- whatever the two Pascal and Pablo, whatever dynamic is going on, you guys need to connect and like become friends and travel places in the world together because I can just picture the dynamic. Pascal is everything. Pascal, yeah. of course, will sweep Joan off yes, her feet. Now, 100%. Joan will probably be like, "You're too worldly too for suave. me. You're too. You've done too much. You've seen too much." You know, but man, I can't be helped, but absolutely swept but one, off my feet yeah, by like, you. Like, like, like his biopic is called One Night with Pascal. <laughs> <laughs> my Night with Pascal. My Night with Pascal. And it was like, and it's, the night is a fever dream because like it was the best night of your entire life. And by the way, this doesn't have to necessarily be, oh, you know what's better? My Night with Pascal and the the perspective that it's written from or told from is like a random guy oh. who, who meet, meets up with Pascal and Pascal like sees him in a cafe or whatever. And is like, you know, he seems lonely, like come with me tonight. And he takes this guy on this journey mm. through like the, uh, like the underground clubs to the yeah. nightlife, to the, the art, Addicts of whatever, and it changes the guy's midnight life. Midnight in Paris, full midnight in Paris, but it changes the guy's life. And then he he wakes up the next morning after you know taking acid or something, and uh, and Pascal's gone. Yeah, it's like my night with Pascal. My night with Pascal. <laughs> Let's see what Pascal does. If it says, if it says, you know, sales exec or or finance like accountant, I'm yeah. gonna lose my shit. Yeah. Okay, Pascal. Salon owner. Okay. I like it. Okay. okay. It, it, that makes that, I, I got, like yeah. It. Obviously, I we like were insane it. with all our crazy stuff, but the French, Evan, French that man business is, that man owner. That man is 69. <laughs> that man. I thought he was going to be the youngest guy out. That man looks like in his 40s. Dude, what? Watch this. is like an old picture from like 27 years ago. He's ready to wow. Eiffel. Oh, so he's French. Pascal is French. Yeah, French biz, French salon owner. So that makes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's the more realistic version of what we oh, were saying. Oh, but going I'm, the theater, I'm living. Trying new restaurants, going to concerts. He's a business owner looking for his soulmate. Oh. And he cannot wait to meet our golden bachelor. He loves the finer things in life and says he isn't a great cook, but he makes great reservations. That's you, babe. That's what you say all the time. Pascal, we'd be best friends when he's not working. Okay, yeah, Pascal. He loves going to the theater. Oh, my God. He's a pr- very proud father and grandfather. Pascal loves taking his grandson to the aquarium. Cute. Pascal played a lot of tennis back in the day. In another life, Pascal would have loved to be a fashion designer. And Pascal is a romantic Frenchman. You guys, listen. I mean. Number one, can you imagine? He probably has a nice accent, too. He's going to have an absolutely gorgeous accent. Also, like, John. getting married to a salon owner, which if you own the salon, you typically are a hairstylist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How you start to get to marry a hairstylist is so dreamy. It's like marrying a chef, you know. It's like it's like wait, I get this. Like you're marrying a <laughs> French hairstylist. Like get the fuck out of here, man. I mean, get out of here. If Pablo and Pascal are not the choices, like I don't even know what I'm gonna do with myself. If she has a fantasy for a romantic Frenchman, I mean, it's over. It's a dream and a half. You know what I mean? This feels like a movie. It's not real life. Pascal, uh, I, you have my heart. You have my heart. Yeah. All right. We needed that. I did. God, two in a row. Pablo and Pascal. I'm kind of like dizzy. Yeah. The <laughs> romance is too intense. I feel like as if I'm in a movie. Next. <sighs> Next. Okay. RJ. RJ. <laughs> okay. Uh, listen here. Here's the thing, RJ. I don't mean this I mean, this is no shade to you, dear sweet RJ, but I'm not going to lie to you. Pascal's photo was giving me a lot, like in the sense that like I could yeah. read his energy. He's leaning. He's smirking. I'm reading his entire story. It's yeah. screaming and jumping off the it. page. 
RJ after Pascal is not giving me so much. Right, of course, of course. It feels more like realtor headshot energy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like realtor. That's great. But I don't think he's a realtor. Okay. I think RJ... Okay. I think that RJ is a man who has his nine to five. He is a good father. He's a hard worker. Simple man. Mm. Simple man. People who know him say he's a nice guy, mm. but can't say much about him. Okay. He's quiet. He's simple. You know, he does, he's, he's a good worker. He's yeah. a good dad. Always shows up to his kids' games. Never late for work. Stays a few minutes late. But when he gets home. Yes. <laughs> this is, I mean, you, I mean, let's, I love you so much, but like, let's get to it. <laughs> You're, are you are you trying to think of it is that what it is no he's like but when no but i'm saying he but when he gets home he has a secret hobby you go into his freaking basement and he has like thousands this is creepy what of is this? miniatures oh <laughs> rj needs to be on some sort of watch list no <laughs> i'm saying he is a kind of maybe a secretly eccentric guy ah. so like he seems super like you know, nine to five, good dad, good worker, doesn't say a lot, but then he's got some eccentric eccentricities, mm. some, some interesting hobbies. Okay. I mean, I think we've hit that part in the episode where we've lost it a little bit. Shh. Uh, I'm going to say taxidermist. Okay. Well, that can go. That's, yeah. That can Your kind eccentricity of go off made of me feel inspired. My eccentricity, like it's a little bit, you know, that's kind of an eccentric but but to your point, it's a hobby. You can't. You know what? I honest, just keep stealing yours. Oh no! Honest to God, I'm fuming now because you're gonna like come for me and make fun of my concept, Last time, and then oh, no, oh, I'll make fun of no, it. No, make fun of it two seconds ago, and now you're gonna steal my. You know exact what? Yeah, I'm piggybacking. Thing. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what he is. Dentist. No, facial hair doesn't say dentist. Um, he is a retired accountant. Because he was, he's now he's growing the facial hair out. But that that guy doesn't say he's whatever the opposite of Pascal is. Yes. Although I will say, is he seven five? Because like the photographer's looking up at him. So yeah, is, they, so is he really tall? And the or is the photographer tall. just on their knees now? He might be. <laughs> I like the idea that he's so tall that there's the angle of the shot RJ's, changes. RJ's like sit down there when you he's take like my picture. Looking down. I yeah, I'm I'm gonna stand by my thing. I okay. think I think he's a, a simple man in yes. his in in his his processes, but a good man, yes. a simple good man. But he's got some weird ass hobbies. Yeah, agreed. that like he'll maybe randomly bring up, and it mm. might throw Joan off a bit. Yeah, and she'll okay. be like, he'll be like, I want to I want to open up about something to you and then he'll like open a case and it's all of his miniatures yeah and she's like doesn't quite know how to handle that yeah. because it's not jones thing so much yeah. okay i could see rj joining us in a nice round of D D. ah you know maybe he doesn't come off as that type of guy but like right. when he likes to get home he likes to like get get freaky with D. &D. yeah all right let's see let's Ready? see rj Irvine. Wow. Financial, Financial advisor. Advi Irvine. You nailed that. Okay. Very nice. All right. All right. Kind of killing it. A big Irvine. Deal. So he's, he's Orange County. Oh, six foot five. So, right. so we were, so we were so looking up at him. So it's him and, um, Keith, what is, what is Keith, Keith, I think looking for, looking for a man in finance, six, five. Nice. Nice. Love that. Nice writing. Uh, well, look no further. RJ is the happiest per, RJ is the happiest person he knows. Okay. That is very strange. It's very funny if that's actually what he said. If he said that, that's funny. But is uh, he, maybe he's a very joyful guy, but that's a, a strange... And he's ready to share all the happiness with a special someone. Maybe in his golden years, but he says, us old guys are still vibrant and suitable for love. When he isn't working, RJ plays... He like loves playing poker and golf and enjoys good food with good friends. His guilty pleasures are warm chocolate chip cookies and long walks on the beach. Mm-hmm. I think he's got some other. He's six five. That'll be the thing. We'll see what he if if he if she if he can compete. Like you said, with I think it being was interesting Keith, enough with, with it if it when it was Keith, excuse me, that when you're that tall, yeah. 
the lead's bound to keep you around longer yeah, because be you're like, like, whoa, he's just so, you stand out. You're memorable because you're so stinking tall. Yeah. Um, he's a, he's looking for his forever snuggle bug. Yeah. Okay. His favorite Christmas movie is Die Hard. It's not a win for me, RJ. I really don't like when people say that. Yeah. Because it's just, there are so many good Christmas movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Mark loved Elf. It's a great Christmas movie. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many. There's so many great Christmas movies. Yeah. Uh, all Kinda the, all the claymation series, yeah. the Muppets Christmas Carol is the number one. Um, RJ has been to 47 of the United States. That's actually crazy. That is a lot. And he loves to read spy novels. Okay, I see what's happening here. You're a spy. Oh. He's been to 47 of the United That's States. That's true. That's interesting. His favorite Christmas movie, movie is Die Hard. Yeah, yeah. And But yet he's reading, he's a financial advisor from Irvine, who his guilty pleasure is warm chocolate chip cookies. He's, spy. He's hiding in plain sight. Spy. He's hiding in plain sight. RJ is a spy. He's like, what's the most vanilla thing ever? Finan- financial advisor in Irvine? Cool. I'm going to be that so that no one will suspect. <laughs> Absolute spy. <laughs> but then I'll decide to kind of put a little bit of a, you know, a, a, a hint in my uh, bio for the Golden Bachelor. Well, he's just a little bit like, you know, he, when that's who you are. Sure. And you're asking fun facts. It's a little bit like, yeah, I, I, I think it's two truths and a lie energy. Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I love. Yeah, because it's like it's it's right there. Right, it's right there. All right, RJ, All spy. Right. Next. We finally have a spy. All right, next and last, Evan. Is it really? Yes. Oh look my at gosh. last. Last guy. Okay. Last. Thomas. It's. I'm, I'm gonna say it's Tomas. You think it's Tomas? Yeah. I'm going to go Thomas. Okay. Thomas. Okay. I think we finally have our plastic surgeon. Whoa. I know I said that about Guy. We have to have a plastic surgeon in here somewhere, people. Okay. Thomas looks like Terry Dubrow to me, which means nothing to you. He is a husband from uh, Real Housewives of Orange County, who is a very famous plastic surgeon. He Mm. looks like him. There's that kind of that, that smile with like the head tilt that's plastic surgeon E. He's very handsome. He's, I don't know. He looks, he looks like a freaking plastic surgeon. I'm now I'm seeing professor. What? Yeah. No. Yes. No now I'm seeing way. professor. The hair is like wavy, kind of messy, but like in an intentional way. Professor. I see, the jacket. He's wearing like a cat, like a, whatever that like is. Like a kind of tweedish Tweed. jacket. That's a, that's a professor's jacket. That's just him. His random style. No. Thomas is a plastic surgeon he loves hanging out on his yacht mm. he has called his yacht a breast because <laughs> boobs have paid for it uh, what oh right sure uh, well, that was very very clever very smart very clever it 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 went into the fact that i have been saying a breast lately that was very smart. Thank you. On many levels. That was a tr- felt triple I, entra- I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I felt good about it when it came out. Wow. I was feeling that good was about like it when it came out. five different things at once. But yeah, that's he's got a yacht called the Breast. Because okay. you know, he's if, when he has his yacht, he has his boat, he's going to give it some plastic surgery name about boobs because he just does so many boobs. That's great. A breast. And so he calls it a breast. I'm going to say, I'm going to say he's, he's a professor. All right. 100%. All right, give it to us, Thomas. Who are you? Whoa! F- fire department chief. Chief. New York, New York. So wow, that's fire, so. That's New York Fire Department. Intense. Being a fire department chief in New York is so intense. A- and if he is an FDNY chief, I was very wrong. Plastic surgeon. But if he he's is an not, FDNY chief, yeah, that means he's been doing it for a long time. Which means those guys have the gnarliest accents. So he's like New York. I guarantee you he's going to talk like this, like big time. Hi, Thomas. Yeah, 100%. You don't like the accent? Yeah. <laughs> and he's 100%. Very 100%. Love is heating up. Is there a firefighter in the house? Thomas, has it covered this New York City fire? You know what? Fire Chief 62 New York. He's going to get a one-on-one and yeah. his story yeah, is going to be about yes, 9-11. Yes, you're absolutely right. There's going to be a big story arc his there. His story is going to be about, like, I'm yes. sure if he's if he's that age and he's a chief, like, he was around during 9-11. That's going to be the, the big the He used big to own story. a crepery in Rhode Island. So he's New York, New York. Knows how to ride a unicycle. See, that is a fun fact. Not wishes he knew how to ride a unicycle. Wait, 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 wait. 
he's a fire chief and he, he used to own a crepery in Rhode Island. I am tickled. Yeah. The accent, the cra- I like Thomas. If you guys don't know, if you haven't figured this out, <laughs> Jess loves an older gentleman. Sorry, everybody. This is going to be a rough. <laughs> Listen, here's the truth of the matter. Um, you know, um, I was, you know, I'm concerned because older gentlemen, the the belief systems, the oh, past sure, and sure. all these things. I was very nervous about Joan and I am still nervous yes. because I'm a little bit like, okay, who are we picking here mm-hmm. and what's the dynamic going to be? But I cannot lie to you. I have always, you know, found an older man attractive. And yeah. so this season is going to be a movie yes. like, oh my right goodness. Right down your alley. Uh, you know, um, but uh, <sighs> let me keep reading here. Um, New York firefighter is a great catch. He's so excited about the opportunity to find love again. He's a father of three and very close with his kids. When he's working hard in the firehouse, he enjoys playing ukulele. Wow. Eating ice cream and listening to Elton John. Walking around Center Park, Thomas is a self-proclaimed great gift giver. He better he better show up with a gift then for Jen. Let's mm-hmm. see this gift. Um, he's hilarious and sarcastic sense of humor. If they say his his in this bio that his humor is sarcastic, yeah. he's going to be really sarcastic and he's probably going to rub some of the guys the wrong way. If they do, I mean, you're he's right. He's going to rub some of the guys the wrong sure. way for sure. But I do agree. He's going to have the best hometown because he's going to be like, oh, the guys of the fire, uh, you know, house and they're going to have a whole thing. And she's going to, she, he's going to take her on the, on the, on the, uh, fairy, the truck, the fire truck. Oh, the fire truck. Yeah. There's a lot to do there. Yes. And when they say that he has a sarcastic sense of humor, I'm right away. I like him even more. Mm -hmm. His future is bright. Knows how to ride a unicycle crepery in Rhode Island, which is so cool. So cool. He's a big skier and even bigger. He'll be a big character. He'll be a big Thomas is going to have to go far. Yeah. I, I, I like Thomas. Yeah, definitely. I, I like can't Thomas wait to see a his lot. personality. I say, I say he's definitely going to get a hometown. Yeah. hundred percent. He's going to get a hometown. I'm not going to lie to you, Evan. There are so many guys that seem awesome. And a lot of, and they're all really good looking too. They're so it's gorgeous. Like, it's like a mixture of like, they're great. gorgeous. They seem interesting. There's a lot of like interesting mm-hmm. guys. And then there's a lot of guys, you know, that don't seem so interesting, but, but then they normal. seem like they uh, are, they're good looking and they seem like they're financially stable. There was, we never once went, whoa. No. Right. Everything's just like pretty good prospects. I think they kind of crushed this yeah, for Joan. I, I mean, we'll see. Obviously, it's always a very different energy once we actually like hear them yeah. talking about like themselves. Then we get a different a different energy. But so far, it's like kind of like Stud Muffin City. I know. And I'm, I'm excited for her. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Well, family, I'm stoked. Yes. I love these men. I'm in love with some of them. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Evan. It's okay. I know. I know this is going to happen. <laughs> but next episode is the first next episode. Next episode is the first episode of uh, first episode of Jones season. Um, so we actually get to meet these gentlemen. So tune in on Friday. On Friday for our first recap of Jones season. And then uh, after that, the following week, we're kind of like, so we're doing the Friday thing. So yeah. then we're going to have them in the second episode. and da, 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 So we'll keep you abreast. Mm. All right, family. Love (laughs) y'all. Love you so much. Bye. Bye.